Former US international then, Hercules yeah. Gomez, uh, joins us. Herc, as someone who follows this very closely, obviously you and Seb on Football Americas, do you get sick and tired of hearing about journeys and uh, plans? It's like, surely you just you want to win. As a fan, you want to see your team go out there and do their best and win a game. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think the fans get tired of this narrative. Certainly uh, us pundits uh, do as well. But in this case, it sort of makes sense uh, if you think about it, Dan. I mean, you save the best team for the Nations League. You're not going to ask for European players, many who are French players in Europe, on the bubble to sacrifice five weeks of their preseason for a second-rate tournament that is the Gold Cup. You want these players preparing the best way they can. A lot of these players, their future up in the air, trying to sort their situation out. So you leave it to the journey, to the planning, but make sure the journey in that planning is done right. Uh, you're looking at this lineup. Uh, we're seeing a lot of players here that quite frankly maybe shouldn't be on the U.S. men's national team at this point or even going forward. If you're talking about the journey, you're talking about planning, you have an Olympic Games coming up. You had a U-20 tournament, a U-20 World Cup. Why don't some of these players who were at that U-20 World Cup, why don't they get implemented into this roster? Why don't you start planning with the base, the U-23 team that would be the Olympic team? Why don't you use that in this tournament? Because let's face it, win or lose, nothing is going to change. Greg Berhalter isn't even in this tournament. He couldn't even bothered to coach his team in this tournament. So what are you playing for? If that's the case, well then, yes, the journey, the destination, all that good stuff, that narrative they're trying to sell us does matter, but do it right. It's the greatest job in the world, isn't it, at the moment? Hey, great old Greg's there like that, isn't <laughs> Well, the team are, they say, oh, they're playing Jamaica, or not playing very well. Where's the coach? No, who knows? He's just having a wee, he's got his feet up. It's all about the journey. All about the journey to the World but, Cup. It's not just... BJ Callan, I don't know the man. It's just coach speak in general now drives me absolutely nuts. It's to try and baffle those out there that are not particularly bright and knowledgeable. <laughs> and it kind of works with some, but unfortunately for most of us that have been over the coals, I mean, it's, as you mentioned, it's, you know, this is just part of, I'm paraphrasing because I can't remember, I sort of switched off. Oh, this is a journey and all these guys are involved in our success. What success? I mean, we're talking about success before we've had success. It's, it's I don't know, I can't listen to it anymore. Uh, Herc, you picked Jamaica. You, 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 yeah. uh, you picked Jamaica to win the whole thing. Were you disappointed they couldn't get it done yesterday? No, I mean, disappointed, yes. But I, I picked a tie in this game. I think they'll, they'll get over. Uh, the U.S. actually wins the group in, in goal differential. But I still have Jamaica winning it all. Uh, if you look at the actual teams in this tournament, Craig, Dan, I said a second-rate tournament because, well, teams send their second best. Uh, Canada isn't sending their best. Uh, Mexico isn't even in their best moment. Some of their best players are, are injured. The U.S. couldn't be bothered. Uh, Panama, Costa Rica, it, it's a total meltdown, generational shift there. Jamaica right now, on paper, you look at the front line, they've got some major firepower. Say, say what you will, but in this CONCACAF region, having four Premier League players from that midfield onto that trident up top, that's, that's a lot of firepower. That's a lot going forward. And this should have been a 2-0 game in that first half, if not for, I don't even want to say Matt Turner. Matt Turner is exceptional in penalty kicks with the U.S. Men's National Team. Uh, I believe they've only scored two on him in six tries, six attempts from the penalty kick spot. But that's Leon Bailey. You, you have a second bite of the apple, and you completely show us why you're completely left-footed when it came on your right foot, an empty net, and you just shank it wide. This should have been a 2-0 game for Jamaica in control, in the driver's seat, and you manage it from there. They did not. They let the points skip away. But I still think in this tournament, Jamaica has just as good a chance of winning it as anybody else. Uh, meanwhile, we saw Pulisic, of course, a key part of the U.S. winning uh, the Nations League last week. Uh, you sat down and spoke to him. Obviously, a lot of speculation about his future. Uh, the latest club he's been linked to is Lyon. Would that make sense for you? I mean... I <laughs> I guess it makes sense in the sense that he's wanted there, right? The, there's an American owner, John Texter, uh, who happens to be a huge fan of Christian Pulisic. He owns Lyon. It, it could make sense for him to go there. I, all I can tell you about Lyon is some of the players that I know who play there, Alexander Lacazette, John Boateng, a few players like that. Lacazette actually had a very good offensive year there. They're a team that likes to prioritize um, the attacking uh, through, through the outsides and, and possession-based football. So that could be a good place for him. I don't think that's the best place for him. I know John uh, uh, Texter also owns 45% of Crystal Palace. That's also been discussed as an option. 
this is the most disheartening thing for American fans. You're talking about a player, the only American player that's ever gone for that type of money from Borussia Dortmund, over $70 million transfer fee. So when you think about what's next for a guy who donned the 10 shirt on a Champions League winning team, you don't think Leon. And I say this with all due respect. You don't think Crystal Palace. You don't think some of these teams that are being linked out there to Christian Pulisic. So it's a little disheartening to think that's what we've gotten today with Christian Pulisic. But he absolutely needs to play. And if his level is Lyon, let him play. If it's Milan, uh, Juventus, that's where he should go. But he needs to play. He's not played. He's not been happy. When I sat down and spoke to him, he made he made he was very adamant about the fact that the next place he goes, if he does leave, has to be somewhere that he's comfortable. Has to be somewhere that he's happy. Has to be somewhere that he's playing. Yeah. But he doesn't want to be placed by an American owner into somewhere where the coach is like, well, right. I'm not. Yeah, it's like, well, okay, okay. I'm, what, do you, what, what do you want me to do with him? What Christian Pulisic needs is to go somewhere where the recruitment department, particularly the head coach, is saying, I want that guy. Yes. That's going to make a difference for my team. It's going to give me a bit of pace on the counter attack. It's going to give me a bit of directness going forward. He can play in several positions. What you don't want is an owner who just sees the American flag and says, oh, yeah, I like this player. He's a good player for the US men's national team. I'll take him in our club. And then the coach, you've got a locking of horns with a coach and Christian Pulisic is back in the same position again where he's had several coaches at Chelsea. Most of them haven't played him regular, albeit with some injuries. He doesn't need that again. He's got to find a home for want of a better terminology, where he's loved and where somebody's going to put an arm around him and where somebody's going to play him and hopefully he's going to stay clear of injuries because if he doesn't, his career's going to start frittering in yeah. the opposite direction. That's crystal clear. He has to absolutely make the right move from a footballing perspective now. Right, he's had his Dortmund, he's had his Chelsea, it hasn't worked out. He needs, at this stage of his career, this is the biggest decision when you're in the prime of your career, that you have to make. And that has to be going to a club where the coach is saying, I want you here, this is what I think, this is what my game plan is, and you're a big part of my starting 11. If it's not that, forget it. Well, Frank Lepuff is still with us. Your boy, Lauren Blanc, of course, in charge at Lyon at the moment, Frank. Do you think he'd want Pulisic? I think if Lyon is interested about uh, Pulisic, it's because uh, Laurent Blanc is interested about uh, Christian. And I never thought that, uh, uh, because I know Laurent, that uh, if he gets in charge uh, a, a team, he doesn't decide for everything. It's been the case uh, with Paris Saint-Germain, and uh, until it worked like that, it worked well, and they, they, they had the best football uh, uh, since, uh, since the Qatari took over, and uh, he decided for everything. When he started to do something tricky in his back, on his back, um, he, he left, and, and he was uh, quickly sacked because he didn't agree with that. Uh, Laurent is somebody, and he's called the president, uh, nicknamed the president, because everybody knows that he likes to decide, he likes to be in charge, and I'm pretty sure that if politics is... Uh, Willing by Lyon is because Laurent Blanc has this, I decided so. Otherwise, I don't see, I don't see that coming up. Uh, Mark, are there any English teams interested at all? Herc obviously mentioned Crystal Palace. Well, all I know is that he's been offered to a lot of English teams. He's been offered to Man United, he's been offered to Newcastle, but I don't think those clubs would make a different scenario for Pulisic. It would be the same situation. He'd be on the bench, getting a game here and there. Clubs like, I think, Milan, Juve, Galatasaray have also been offered him. I think... You know, Leon. Maybe he can use it as, a, as Memphis Depay did a, a place to relaunch his career. Maybe he needs to do that. Maybe he's to reset and go again because the clubs that, are, that could afford him are the clubs that don't want him. And Crystal Palace, obviously, they're, they're probably going to lose Wilfred Zaha. Maybe Palace, but you know, maybe Palace is, is a good club. The problem with, the, with, with Palace and, and the Pulisic is that he's not had the chance in the Premier League to prove he's a Premier League player. I think we've seen flashes, but because he's not played enough. The likes of Man United and Newcastle are being offered him and they're, taking, they're saying no because they haven't seen enough of him. As far as they're concerned, he's, he's a squad player. They don't need squad players. So he probably needs to find a club, like the guy said, that will play him most weeks and enable him to, at 24 to go again. He's still young enough to go again and maybe that's what he needs to play every week and show that he's the player that we all thought he was four years ago. Herc, we'll let you go. Do you have any last words you'd like to give us before you leave? No, obviously, uh, Augie mentioned his salary. There. That's going to be a major hurdle to overcome. 
Uh, I was in this event my, with, in Miami, excuse me, with Christian Pulisic. And well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.